Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a little bit different. I didn't think I wanted to post this video, but I've gotten so many questions and I've gotten so many requests to update you guys on how my skin is doing, what I'm doing to heal my skin, like what's the update, what's been happening. So that's what this video is going to be about today, very laid back and chill. I want to talk to you guys about the products I've been using on my skin, what I was using, what I am using, everything I've been doing for the past three months to try to get my skin back to what it used to be. So I have always been someone who had really good skin and didn't really suffer from acne or major breakouts whenever I would break out. It would be in like tiny little white bumps on my forehead or it was just like a few Large huge pimples around that time of the month and then after about like a week It would just fade away with the bumps They would fade as well after a few nights of really good hydration and taking care of my skin But recently around the first week of August my skin totally freaked out and I didn't know what it was I knew it wasn't makeup because it started happening on my chest as well, and I don't put makeup on my chest so it was really weird, it got really irritated. I just started getting bumps all over my forehead and all over my chest. They were like little tiny red pimples, but they weren't like pimples. I don't know how to explain them. I spoke about this briefly in another video. I will link it down below, but it actually started off on my chest. I started to notice red bumps all over my chest and I hadn't changed my body wash. I wasn't using anything that would irritate my chest. I never spray perfume on my chest, always on my neck. So it was really weird. And and then it started happening on my forehead and it first started out like right here on my forehead and as the days passed on it started to spread all over my forehead it got wider and wider and wider on my forehead and it was the strangest thing like I can't even explain it it was like texture all over my forehead and some of it was pimples and some of it was just bumpy it was so weird it's something that has never ever happened to me before so the only thing I could think of was that it was my diet because I had recently changed my diet the beginning of August I kind of cut out dairy completely from my life I no longer eat milk cheese eggs and I also cut out meat I had recently gone to a gastrologist because my stomach aches were getting to the point where it was after every single meal I had a stomach ache and that's been happening since I was a little girl I thought it was normal to have a stomach ache after eating and then when I went to a gastrologist he was like you know maybe you're allergic to dairy and I was like well Damn, maybe I am. So I just started having a plant-based diet to see if that would improve my health, and it did. I stopped getting stomach aches. Like, I haven't had a stomach ache caused by food in a really long time. But then, this was happening to my skin, and I was like, oh my gosh, and maybe is my body going through a detox? So for a while, I thought it was that, and I just continued on with my regular skincare since... For months and months prior to this, my skincare was working fine, and then it just wasn't going away. And I figured that a detox wouldn't last that long so I ended up going to a dermatologist and I had never been to a dermatologist before but I thought it was the only thing left to do it got to a point where my skin looked better without foundation because whenever I wore foundation they just looked like tiny little fungus balls all over my face really gross I know but but so she didn't really tell me much she just told me it was acne she kind of looked at my face and was like oh, okay Here's some products. Now, I will say that before I show you any of the products I'm using, I am not a dermatologist, I am not an esthetician, I don't know crap about skin, I didn't go to school for that. Please take my advice with a grain of salt. And just because something worked out for me doesn't mean it's gonna work out for you and vice versa. Skin is such a tricky, touchy subject. So she prescribed two things for me and I was really hesitant to try these because they are very strong and I didn't wanna damage my skin any further, but I mean, I was willing to try anything. She prescribed this Epiduo Forte, and it is an adapalene, I don't know what that word means, and benzyl peroxide gel. And this is a topical cream, which they are very, very strong. And then she also gave me this. These are topical little solution pads, and this is, it doesn't have an exact name, it just says clindamycin. Clindamycin? Clindamycin. Clindamycin. Oh my gosh. Clindamycin. Clindamycin Phosphate Topical Solution 1% and they just look like this. They are little pads. You can't see that, but they're just like little pads and they smell like pure alcohol, like pure freaking alcohol. She told me to wash my face. She also gave me like this green tea cleanser that didn't really work out for me. I didn't like it at all. Um, she told me to just wash my face before bed and then apply the Epiduo Forte and then in the morning wash my face again and then apply the little solution pads. This was supposed to just like disinfect the acne or disinfect my problem areas. So I ended up really, really loving this. I found that this made an incredible difference. This, on the other hand, I have a love-hate relationship with this. So 
The first night I used this, I was floored when I woke up in the morning. My face looked 20 times worse than it did before I used it. It was so inflamed, my skin went nuts overnight. And of course, I went to Twitter and I like flipped out and a lot of you guys were telling me, no, keep using it. Topical creams usually make your skin look worse before it makes it look better. So I ended up taking everyone's advice because I got so many comments that said the same thing. So I used it one more night and I, oh, I'm so mad I don't have a picture, but my skin got better. Like it dramatic, it went from really, really bad to pretty decent. Like the next day I was like, oh my gosh, it's gone down so much. The dermatologist also told me to skip a day because I told her I had really dry skin. She was afraid this was gonna dry out my skin too much. So when I went to use it again, I noticed zero changes. Like it had fixed it, but it wasn't really fixing it much. And then when I went to use it again, it actually kind of burned my skin a bit. Like once it took everything to the surface and kind of calmed down my skin a bit, it wasn't working anymore. I feel like this was just burning my skin, so I completely stopped using it. I feel like it helped as much as it could. And then I kind of just went back to my same old routine. My skin was better, but it wasn't going away. And after a few days of no improvement, I thought, okay, I'm just gonna do my research myself. I'm not gonna go to dermatologist. I'm gonna figure this out on my own. And thankfully, I had you guys to back me up because I got so many tweets and comments telling me that they thought I had Malaysia folikitis. I know that's not how you say it, but I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to say it. So it's like an inflammatory skin condition that's triggered by like the yeast in your skin or too much yeast. And when I started to Google images of people who had this, it looked really similar to what I had. Still to this day, I'm not exactly sure if that's what I had, but that's what it looked like. So I became my own doctor and I started to treat my skin like if I had that. Again, I don't recommend that. So a lot of the treatments or how you get rid of Malaysia vulgarly is pretty much orally, like antifungal medications, something that you definitely need to see your doctor for. But since I didn't know if I had that, and for some reason, I don't know why, I didn't go to the doctor to ask if I had that, I used this on my skin. And I know that this sounds crazy, but it helped a little bit. This is Nizerol. It's an anti-dandruff shampoo, and I pretty much use this as a face mask. <laughs> That sounds really bad. But I use this as a face mask only on my forehead. I only put it on my forehead and on my chest for a few minutes. I didn't want to leave it on too long, just a few minutes. And then I would rinse it off and wash my face and do my normal skincare. This really helped the inflammation. I truly believe that my skin was reacting like that due to like bacteria on the skin or fungus on the skin. I'm not exactly sure. So I used this a few times and I found it to be really, really helpful. But I'm a chicken when it comes to skin and I didn't want to use it too much. So I kind of stopped using this and I moved on to other things. I started to use a very very, very simple skincare routine, like very, very simple. I then started to think like, you know, this has to be something I'm eating. There, This has to be something I'm doing. And I started kind of like an elimination diet process. I got extremely simple with what I was eating. I was eating like pff, the most bland, most basic, just like nothing foods that I know never irritated me just to see what it was. And I kind of came to the conclusion I think I know what caused it. I'm pretty sure that it was kombucha. I noticed that I was drinking a lot of kombucha when this was happening. It's helped so many people. It's so good for you. It kind of has like good bacteria in it. It also has yeast in it, which could probably be the reason. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of beneficial things to it and I wish that there would be another explanation but there has to be something in kombucha that my body does not agree with. But once I started this whole elimination diet process and I stopped drinking kombucha, it took a while but I noticed that my skin started to get better. Now, let's keep in mind that at this point, like as Kathleen is doing this elimination thing and she stopped drinking kombucha, she didn't think it was the kombucha. I still thought it was something else so I started to invest into different skincare options and and I am so convinced that this has really helped my skin. This is the Sunday Riley UFO Ultra Clarifying Face Oil. It says it's for oily to acne prone skin, which is the reason why I didn't want to try it. But I had seen so many good reviews that I was like, why not? Let me try this. So the first night I used this, I saw an incredible difference in my skin. It has 1.5% salicylic acid treatment oil and my bumps just looked less red whenever I use this. Now because it is for oily skin, I only use this about twice a week. There is a major thing that I'm going to share with you right now that I 
promise you it's what's made my skin better but I'll get into that in a second but yeah I noticed that because my skin was so congested this was just helping clear my skin to be safe I started using a more natural skincare so I started using the Vana cream gentle facial cleanser I got this at Target this is great for sensitive skin free of dyes lanolin fragrance masking fragrance parabens formaldehyde and other preservatives sulfate free and it is amazing it's so gentle I love it way more than um, the CeraVe facial cleanser and more than the Cetaphil one those leave a little bit of a film on my face when I'm done washing my face this one didn't do that it's really really great I definitely recommend it for those of you with sensitive skin and it's pretty affordable I got it at Target like I said I was using this strictly instead of any of my other face washes and it made a difference in how red my skin was my skin was getting so red from just drying it out and then for my moisturizer at night I noticed that my beloved my beautiful Origins Nitamins moisturizer wasn't doing it for me anymore. Every time I used it, it was almost like my skin like got worse the next day. I don't know what it is because I am a huge believer in that cream. It has made a huge difference in my skin, but for what I'm going through currently, I don't like it so much. I have always really loved the Ultra Repair Cream by First Aid Beauty. It's safe for sensitive skin, it's allergy tested, no artificial fragrance, and it helps hydrate parched skin, relieve minor irritation due to eczema and other conditions, and it's awesome. Awesome. Every time I have a really bad reaction to something, I always use this, like for years. I love using this whenever my skin needs a really good pick-me-up. So I have been using this at nighttime before bed. In conjunction with this, this my friends is a miracle product. I have come to the conclusion that the reason why my skin is getting back to normal is because of this. This is aloe vera. Pure, natural, disgustingly scented. Aloe vera. I don't like the scent of natural aloe vera. It smells literally like armpits. Danny's dad actually has an aloe vera plant in his backyard, so I go and I steal some aloe vera from him. And it was actually Danny's stepmom who gave me the idea. She used to have really bad acne when she was younger, and she said that aloe vera healed her skin. So I started using it, and oh my gosh. This is a miracle plant. I mean, aloe vera is used for so many different reasons. They do call it like a medical plant, and I agree, I love you. So what I would do is I would kind of like rip open the aloe vera plant like this, and then I would get all the juices and spread it. That sounds so disturbing. I would spread it all over my face. And it's really gross at first because the scent is like, but I would just rub it into my skin, like into my full face. I put it everywhere and I would put it all over my chest. And it wasn't so bad because aloe vera dries instantly. Like it feels goopy and sticky and kind of like slime. It feels very, very slimy. But it dries really, really fast. So you're not sleeping with like this slimy, wet thing the whole night. It dries fast. The scent kind of lingers. But I mean, it's totally worth it. I recommend this for everyone. I don't know if like aloe vera gel works the same, like the ones you use on sunburns or like aloe vera face masks that they sell in store. I don't know how good that is. I would just recommend buying the actual plant and using that on your face. It's the most natural way to do it. And in my opinion, it's the most potent. If you don't have a plant of your own, I mean, I see aloe vera everywhere. I've seen it at Publix. I've seen it at a bunch of grocery stores. <laughs> Aloe vera has become my new best friend. I swear by this. It has made an incredible difference in my skin. I will say, because it dries instantly, I don't think it's really great for hydrating the skin. It's amazing for purifying the skin and for like clearing the skin, but it doesn't really hydrate my extremely dry skin. So yeah, I wanna show you guys pictures of what my skin looks like now. I, I wanna say that I do have some scarring from the situation that has been going down for the past three months, almost four months that I've been on this journey to good skin. I've never really had really bad acne in the past, so I didn't know. I mean, I always knew. I always knew it's bad to pop your pimples. Everybody tells you that it is. It's bad because I had like two really large disgusting pimples and from messing with them and from popping them so much I have scarring but it was so bad that I am very very accepting of what's happening right now it is almost completely gone from my chest you can't tell in the video but I have a few spots where it's still bumpy I still feel the bumps it's still red in some areas but nothing like how it was before and hopefully it continues to go in this direction hopefully the kombucha was the culprit and now that it's gone out of my system I won't be drinking it anymore. Hopefully things stay on this path. But yeah, I just wanted to update you guys on my skin because I have been asked so much. Try out aloe vera. It is so good for the skin. 
Let me know if you've tried this. I know we all have skin issues and we're all struggling with our skincare. So let's turn the comments into advice for one another. Leave a comment down below with your current skincare issue and maybe someone else who has previously had that issue but found a cure for it can comment. And we could just give each other advice on our skin because it is a learning process. Oh, I wanted to zoom in. So this is my forehead now. It was so bad, I can't even tell you. This is the scar, this is completely flat like you know, there's no bumpiness there, but I have like these three dots that I don't think are going anywhere. <laughs> and I have the scarring from the bumps over here as well. But yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about today. That completes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.